Welcome to section 5.2, verifying trigonometric identities. We're going to be using our trig identities to try and prove some... Uh... Before we get started with our problems, we're going to walk through some steps. Step number one, you want to make sure you're starting with the most complicated side of the equation. And just want to clarify here, we are only changing one side of the equation. In chapter four, some of you tried to change both sides, but we are only changing one side. For step two, some things we can think about factoring out an expression if they have a common term, combining fractions, squaring a binomial in your denominator to try and get a single term, or somehow trying to create a monomial denominator. Uh, step three, you want to use fundamental identities like reciprocal identities, quotient identities, and all of these essentially lead to step four, converting everything to sine or cosine. And then lastly, just try something. You never know where it's going to lead. All right, here's our first example. We have secant of alpha times the cosine of alpha is equal to 1. I'm going to start with the left side here, which is uh, secant of alpha times cosine of alpha, because that is definitely a more complex. And I'm going to try and rewrite things to get them to simplify to be exactly 1. If I think about my reciprocal identities, I know that secant is the same as 1 over cosine. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. And then I have times cosine. And I can go ahead and do some cross-canceling here. Get my cosines to cancel out, and when I do that, I end up getting 1 equals 1. Again, I want to reiterate here, we only worked on the left side, so I got my left side to simplify all the way down to 1, and then my right side was also 1. I did not change the right side at all. We just changed the left side to get it to equal the right side. All right, for our next example, we're going to go ahead and start with our left side again. So I have sine squared of alpha over tangent squared of alpha. If I use my quotient identity, I can rewrite tangent squared. So I have sine squared of alpha over sine squared over cosine squared. And then instead of dividing by sine squared over cosine squared, I'm going to multiply by my reciprocal, which means I'm going to be multiplying by cosine squared over sine squared. And then I can go ahead and cross cancel my sine values. And I am left with just the cosine. So I have transferred my left side into cosine squared, and it equals cosine squared. I'm again going to start with our left side. I have cosine squared minus sine squared. I'm going to go ahead and start by rewriting sine squared. If I think back to my Pythagorean identity, I know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So then if I subtract cosine squared on both sides, I would get sine squared. So I'm going to substitute that in. Now we have cosine squared minus 1 minus cosine squared. If I distribute that negative sign, then we have cosine squared minus 1 plus cosine squared. When I combine my two cosines, I have 2 cosine squared minus 1, and that is going to equal what I need it to be, which is 2 cosine squared minus 1. All right, here we have something we haven't had to deal with yet. I've got two separate terms I need to combine. I'm going to go with my quotient identities. I'm going to start by rewriting the tangent function as sine over cosine. And then I'm going to rewrite cotangent as cosine over sine. I am going to need to get these together, so I need to get a common denominator. In order to make that happen, I'm going to multiply the left fraction by sine over sine. And then I'll multiply the right fraction by cosine over cosine. And what I end up getting with is uh, sine squared plus cosine squared over sine of x times cosine of x. And then I can use my Pythagorean identity to simplify sine squared plus cosine squared, which is 1. If I simplify this now, I can do my reciprocal identities. I have 1 over sine is the same as cosecant, and 1 over cosine is the same as secant. And when I'm multiplying things, the order multiplication can be reversed, so I can go ahead and rewrite this as secant of x times cosine of x, and that is what I needed it to be. All right, for this next example, we have tangent squared of x plus 1 times cosine squared of x minus 1. I'm going to deal with that side. It's definitely more complicated than negative tangent squared. For both of those expressions, I'm going to go ahead and use my, uh, my Pythagorean identities. Again, I know that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, which means that cosine squared minus 1 is going to end up being a negative sine squared. And then tangent squared plus 1 
is going to directly translate into secant squared. Looking at secant squared, I can use my reciprocal identity and rewrite that as 1 over cosine squared. And then we have times negative sine squared. When I multiply that together, we have negative sine squared over cosine squared. And that's going to simplify to be exactly negative tangent squared. And I've transformed the left side to equal the right side. All right, once again, it looks like we're starting with our left side here. I'm going to start by splitting this up into two separate terms. So I can do secant squared over secant squared as one term, and then negative 1 over secant as my second term. And I can do this because I have a single denominator, so I can split it up in two separate fractions. It's like we're undoing adding with a like denominator here. So when I do that, I have secant squared of alpha over secant squared of alpha, and then minus 1 over secant squared. Secant squared over secant squared is going to be 1. And 1 over secant squared is going to end up being cosine squared. All right, if I think about my Pythagorean identities, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So if I subtract cosine on both sides, it equals sine squared. I can go ahead and replace it with sine squared then. And I am done because my left side now looks like my right side. All right, for my next example, I do have two terms in my denominator. We've seen this in the past. I'm going to go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by 1 plus instead of 1 minus. So I have 1 plus sine of x over 1 plus sine of x. And again, I don't want to multiply my numerator together yet because hopefully something will cancel. So I'm going to leave that as 1 plus sine of x and then times cosine of x. For my denominator, when I multiply that together, I'm going to get 1 minus sine squared. Using our Pythagorean identities, again, 1 minus sine squared can be replaced by cosine squared. So I have 1 plus sine of x times cosine over cosine squared. I can cross off my cosine with the exponent, and I have 1 plus sine over cosine. Similar to our last example, I can now split that up into two separate terms. So I have 1 over cosine plus sine over cosine. 1 over cosine is going to directly become secant using our reciprocal identities. And then using the quotient identity, sine over cosine is going to become tangent. And we have completed our proof. All right, so here we have two fractions with two separate denominators. I'm going to deal with the individual denominators first and then see about getting a common denominator. To do that, I'm going to multiply my fraction on the right by 1 minus sine of alpha divided by 1 minus sine of alpha. And then for my fraction on the left, I'm going to multiply by 1 plus sine of alpha over 1 plus sine of alpha. All right, so for my numerator on my left fraction, we just get exactly that 1 plus sine of alpha. And then I have 1 minus sine squared. Over on the right side, we have 1 minus sine of alpha over 1 minus sine squared. All right, so both my fractions have the same denominator. I can go ahead and combine the numerators. I can also rewrite my denominator as cosine squared, again, using our Pythagorean identities. So I'm going to do that first. And then for my numerator, I can cancel some things out because I have a positive sign and I have a negative sign. So when I combine them, they're going to go away, which means I'm just left with a 1 plus 1. So I now have 2 over cosine squared. And if 1 over cosine squared is secant, then 2 over cosine squared is going to be 2 secant. And we are done. All right, guys, that does it for our notes for this section. Go ahead and get started on the homework, and good luck.